You're listening to the 49 Carats Podcast, a 49ers goldmine production with Stephanie Sanchez. What's going on, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the 49 Carats Podcast. I'm your host, Steph, and I'm joined here with a special co-host, Jason Aponte. You all know who he is, so we know we could skip the intro this time, right? Who? <laughs> How are you feeling today, Jay? I'm good. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm good considering everything's good in my, you know, there's a lot of things going on yeah. in the world. We don't have to get into all yes, that or whatever, but I'm good uh, considering things that are close to me are good. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, one thing that I, I definitely want to talk about, uh, there's a lot to talk about, um, but we did get some good news. I mean, we got some good news. Colin Kaepernick has a workout scheduled with the Raiders. In fact, he's going to be working out for them today. So that's just a little bit of good news. I've always been a big Colin Kaepernick fan. I know he's no longer a 49er, but to me, like he'll he will always be a 49er and I will always have like a you know a soft spot for for Cap and uh, appreciate everything he's done on and off the field. And I'm really stoked about seeing him get an opportunity. Uh, you know, it's for the Raiders, I know, but it's still exciting. I mean, I'm I'm excited. What about you, Jay? How you feel about this one? How Hell yeah, I'm excited. And look, guys, 49er fans, I know you're not going to like this answer. Because, let's face it, I'm an East Coast guy, right? And I don't know the vibes, right? Why the hell do they let an East Coast guy talk about the 49ers? And what the hell does he know? I, I see it all, right? If that man makes the 49 if the, that man makes the Raiders roster, that jersey is in the cart and copped. And yeah. I'm not looking back. Say whatever the hell you want to say about the Battle of the Bay and how could you do that as a 49er fan? The Battle of the Bay don't concern me. I'm from New York. Don't bother me. The Raiders <laughs> never been a problem. You know who I hate? The Cowboys, the Packers, the Giants, the Seahawks. The Raiders never been on my radar. You know why? They never been good. They never bothered the 49ers. <laughs> but the fact is, if Colin Kaepernick would have joined any team, Cop in that jersey, and it's mine, and I want it. And that black and gray, or that white with the black number, and it's seven, is gonna go. It too goes hard. hard. It goes hard. I'm, <laughs> yeah, it goes hard. Lightweight, like <laughs> copped immediately. Copped immediately, guys. I'm so happy, man, and I am just hoping that he gets it done and they actually come to their senses. Because I will tell you this: the two backup quarterbacks on the Raiders roster, Jared Stidham and Nick Mullins are not better than Colin Kaepernick, even in his age 34 a year. So make the move, not at Vegas. All. Make the move. Let's go. Rare Mark Davis win. <laughs> Very rare. Rare W. Rare W. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, yeah, we'll, we'll enjoy that one. But anyway, I, you know, we know why a lot of you are here, what you guys want to – hear us talk about and I haven't said anything about it yet so like this this is my chance I get I guess to give my two cents and I'm gonna just say this Twitter tizzy is back okay Twitter tizzy if you guys don't know what that is that was a very special segment that the 49 carats podcast we like to do okay because we talk about the 49ers Twitter I mean we talk about the 49ers quite a lot and they give us a lot of content but you know who gives us even more content? 49ers Twitter. So, <laughs> so for, uh, Twitter Tizzy is just, you know, what is 49ers Twitter up in arms about now? Okay. And we all know what happened yesterday between Javon Kinlaw and Grant Combe. And, you know, we're going to talk about it. Um, but before we do that, like, I just want to take a step back, right? Because everyone has seen the video at this point. I will show, show a clip in a bit, but I think everyone has pretty much seen the video at this point. But maybe not everyone knows the background of or the context of how we got there or how they got there. So I guess, so on Tuesday, OTAs was open to the media. So all the media members were there. Grant Cohn was there. 
And I guess Javon Kinlaw saw him. They saw each other. And I guess Javon Kinlaw went up to Grant Cohn, confronted him in some sort of way. He bumped his chest on him, apparently. He threw the hat that Grant Cohn was wearing off his head. That's pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like, there were some words said, I guess. Ken Law said a few things at that point. Um, I think Grant was a little confused about, you know, what ticked off Ken Law. But anyway, Grant Cohn went live on his channel later that day, yesterday on Tuesday. And... Ken Law, I guess, wanted to join the live. So he he let him on. And at that point, I don't even think Grant expected or could have predicted <laughs> what happened next because I've never seen anything uh, like that. And you could tell right away that Ken Law was, you know, ticked off. And you could see a smirk coming on Grant's face because he's like, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> but again, like... <laughs> Again, like you can't predict what happened. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show just a small bit of the clip. The they Kinlo was on there for maybe like five ish minutes before five Grant minutes. like booted him uh from the live stream. But yeah, well, just it, bro. hey Javon, let me tell you something. Bro, fuck all that, man. Stop playing with my name, bro. Like you're not Come gonna on. see me every single day, bro. I'm there, I'm gonna be Stop there every day. Playing with me, bro. I'm gonna be there every day, Stop Javon. Playing with me, bro. And I want you I to see that, man. Bro. I want you to prove me wrong. And if you bro, play I'm wrong, you're the first person to say it. Show, bro. I'm going to prove you. That's on God himself, boy. All right. Again, not going to play the whole thing. There was a lot of worse things Curtain. said than, than – Yeah, there was a lot of worse things said than just that small clip that I just played you guys. And, again, I'm sure you guys have all seen it. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, continue playing it. But this has now reached, like – it's gone beyond, you know, 49ers Twitter, and it has reached national media. TMZ has reported on it, you know, uh, national media members. Pete Prisco, you can see here, he had a few things to say about it. Even Tyreek Hill. I don't know what dog Tyreek Hill has in this fight, but he apparently has some thoughts about this as well. Apparently he's going to record a podcast about it. I don't know. Um, I'm tired but... of these podcasts, this stuff, man. Like these guys <laughs> got to get a job at this point. I mean, honestly, Tyreek Hill, get a job, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah. Cloud chasers. <laughs> Cloud chasing, man. I'm tired of these clickbaiters, podcasters. Goodness gracious, it's it's getting too out of hand now. <laughs> Seriously, first it was Draymond, now Tyreek Hill. You know, come on, just keep riding the wave. But anyway, yeah, like even even players, 49er players have started to chime in. And I know like this is kind of these are some screenshots here and these are kind of tiny. You can't really see what they say, but that just goes to show you how many players have actually chimed in on this. You see Debo, Tabor Pepper, George Kittle um, very recently, Brandon Ayuk, Eric Armstead, they all had something to say about this. And I mean, one, it, it shows that there's, you know, they back each other up. That's a that's definitely a good sign. There, there's some team bonding going on over this, no doubt, which is a, a great sign. But also it shows that it's not just Ken Law that is fed up with Grant. And I, I'll just say this. Um, like, I understand Grant Cohn, I, I feel like I understand his content, why he is the way that he is, right? And it works for him. Uh, he gets a ton of engagement. His YouTube is, like, great. I'm sure after yesterday, it's blown up even more. 50K so he's subs not, now, I believe. Whew, so he's not hurt by this in, in the least bit. Um, but I'll say this. Like, I also understand where Kinlaw is coming from, Right. I think what we saw yesterday, we saw built up frustration, built up anger that got unleashed and directed towards Grant. Okay. And Grant may have contributed to a lot of that frustration and anger. Okay. Um, but I think there are other aspects to it as well. And I don't know if, I, uh, Jason, I know you were just on uh, Brad's channel, and I don't know if you guys. Uh, touched on this, but Brad earlier on Twitter, he's, he posted some screenshots. He pointed out the fact that 
uh, you know, Kinlaw has actually responded to some fans saying some things about him, like, you know, saying he's not going to be good this year or, you know, just criticizing him. Fans criticizing Kinlaw, Kinlaw responding to those fans. So, again, it's not just coming from Grant. Uh, we got to remember that. Sometimes players do see what we say about them. Okay? So, again, built up frustration, built up anger. Obviously, he's had a lot of injuries as well. Um, so that just adds to it. And I'm not making any excuses for him because ultimately – I think, you know, he could have gone about it a different way. Grant could have gone about it a different way. Um, and I, But I just think it's unfortunate for, for Kinlaw because, you know, Grant, he represents himself. You know, he, he represents his brand. He doesn't really represent, like, a, a certain publication. Like, I know Sports Illustrated or 49ers SI is – you know, attached to his name a bit, but, you know, he's kind of his own person and, and content creator, right, in a way. Um, so he, again, like I said, he is not hurt by this, really. To me, it's unfortunate because Kinlaw represents himself, but he also represents the 49ers. And I've already seen, you know, people turn on Kinlaw and, you know, say all these things about him. And, and again, you know, he could have gone, gone about it a different way, but like, I, I want to come from the standpoint where I understand both sides and I'm not picking any side like that. That's who I am. I, I don't, I don't feel very strongly about either side. So, so that's me. Um, but again, yeah, I just feel like it's, it's, a. Uh, an unfortunate situation. I know you said this earlier as well, Jason, that, uh, you know, there's football happening. OTAs happen. L like, you know, let's, let's talk about football. And it, it's a little, this has become, I don't want to say a distraction. Cause I don't, I don't know if it's a distraction. It's dominating the the I can't. Cycle, though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's also unfortunate. Um, but Jason, I'm gonna let you talk. And I know, you were just on Brad's channel and you shared some news on the situation. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So they had a discussion now, whether that means something that is going to continue on his end, clearly that locker room has things to say, and it, it does tie into what you were talking about is that they're a brotherhood, but they've had their conversation. And from what I was told, it has been hashed out and that's all that, that matters at this point. Look, mistakes were made on both sides. And I think both yeah. of them would agree that they could have handled this much better on both sides. And I, who could argue that at this point? You know, we watched players openly talk to people that are their largest detractors. And I would point to Richard Sherman on first take. Richard Sherman didn't go on first take and talk to Skip Bayless and say, I'm going to put my chest on you. You know what it is. But like, I think we know. An in-shape football player, an older, you know, reporter in Skip Bayless, you know, Grant's a tall guy. Javon Kinlaw is a monster. I don't think that anybody needed any reassurances into what you could do to someone if you wanted to. I think that if Kinlaw would have went about it a different way in terms of, well, you called me this, you called me this, you called me this. Here's why A, B, and C is wrong. Here's why I had this, this, and this to say. As far as what I know now, the discussion has been had, and they are fine with each other at this point. Now, what happens going forward, I cannot predict clearly, but I know the discussion has been had. I've double-checked it. Trust me, because people are yelling at me already on Twitter. I double-checked it, triple-checked it. It's, it's, it's done. The conversation's done. Now, what happens going forward is a little bit different, but when you see the locker room kind of talk about this in a concerted manner where they're all you know together at this point I don't think that anybody needed to be an insider to think that there were people in the locker room that weren't big fans of Grant and I promise you that this comes from a place of Grant's a friend of mine in real life not a internet friend Steph's a friend of mine in real life we're friends right like we've met in person we're friends yeah he's very tall right <laughs> So the rumors are true. But at the same time, I'm from 
a place where friends are able to speak to friends openly and not get upset with each other. If Steph says something that I don't agree with, I would love to talk to her on the side, not publicly on the timeline and say, hey, listen, I disagree with this. This is, you know, and if she disagrees with that, cool. A discourse will happen. You know why? Because we're friends. Same thing happens with Grant and I. If Grant and I have a discussion or anything like that, or if I need something to get off my chest, I have that man's number. I will call him. I will text him and say, this is what's going on. This is what I'm feeling because that's what friends do. So the discussion has been had. I've double and triple checked. It's been had. I don't know how this is going to proceed from here. But what I do know is the discussion has been had. Do both of those people believe that they could have handled this differently? Absolutely. And I don't think it takes an insider to believe that. Javon Kinlaw could have went on and accurately discussed what his issues were with Grant. Unfortunately, his emotions took over him. And I'm not going to sit here and tell him how he should respond to criticism because that is something that that man has to deal with on his own. And I'm not here to criticize him in any way. Because, again, and I talked about this earlier, I have a propensity at times to clap back at people on Twitter. And I sometimes, after I send a tweet, I'm just like, man, Jay, you're better than that. Don't do that. Don't say that. Sometimes you got to let things go. Catch me on a good day, and that rolls off my back. Catch me on a day when I stub my toe on something or something has gone wrong, I'm going to unleash on you. And that's something I need to be better with. Nobody's perfect. The idea is to be better every single day. I think that if you ask both of them, they would tell you that they would have handled this differently. And I think that that's the right way to think about it. Nobody's perfect. And I think that this this discussion that they had is a good starting point to mending the relationship from not friends, because you don't have to be friends, just Mm -hmm. respectful. And that's it. And I think that both of them know that now. And I think that there were mistakes on both sides. So again, I have friends in real life. Steph's a friend in real life. Grant's a friend in real life. Anybody that's my friend, I consider that an open discussion in terms of, hey, I don't agree with this. You know, friends should be able to tell themselves about each other without it being, well, I can't talk to you ever again. If I didn't care, I wouldn't tell you, right? And I think that's kind of where I'm at with the discussion and how my relationship with Grant is. He is a friend of mine, no doubt. Much of my success is due to him and I disagreeing on camera civilly, and I 100% own that. But at the same time, both of these guys could have handled this better. That's it. And and, and that's it. And, And realistically, it just comes down to being able to have a work respect. Many of you, Steph, everybody that's watching, have had jobs where... You walk in and you're cool with everybody. And that's fine. But then many of you have had jobs where you walk in and those people you don't necessarily are, you're not necessarily friends with, maybe not even like, but there's respect. Everybody's got to do their job. Everybody's got to do their job and just keep it moving and be respectful. And I think that should be the lesson of all of this is it's less about does this person like this person? It just needs to be respect. That's all. Respect is what is paramount. When it comes to any sort of working relationship, one person has to do a job on the field. One person has to do a job critiquing what happens on that field. But there has to be respect between the two parties. That's it. Yep. Yeah. I I mean, I'm glad you mentioned the the respect aspect of it, because I think even as fans, we forget how much we might contribute to a player's mental health or anger towards what is being said about them and you can say all you want well a player just needs to have tougher skin that's still a human like let's let's not forget like yes he i mean players are more accustomed to having people talk about them right but that doesn't mean that you know you can only take so much right and so at the end of the day these players are human as well and again i think Like I mentioned, Kinlaw saw those comments on uh, Brad's Instagram, the SF Niners Instagram, and he would respond to them. Can you think about how many players have probably seen those comments and not responded? Like, they they look at this stuff. 
social media has just made that that more easier, that much easier to do. Um, and so, again, I think fans as well could, you know, think about how they can be more respectful towards players. And I'm not saying that players aren't allowed to be critiqued because, I mean, you know, we're allowed to talk about players that we're allowed to have opinions, but like adding a player, you know, like actually mentioning them, commenting on their posts, like that takes it a step too far. And at that point, you're no better than Grant. If you don't like Grant and you don't like what he's doing, don't do that same shit. Like, that's all I'm gonna say. Like, um, yeah, I think I think pl- uh, fans could be a little more respectful as well. Uh, 49er Media asks, do you guys think anything happens with Grant or Ken Law? I would assume. Um, you know, I don't know if anything happens to Ken Law. Like, he's not gonna get cut or anything. Like, I think they'll no. probably just have a talk with him. Uh, you know, I think. I think they understand where Ken Law is coming from as well. Okay. So I, I don't think anything bad is going to happen to Ken Law. Okay. Nothing that we'll see. Okay. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be taken care of internally. As far as Grant, I don't know either. But, you know, nothing has happened to him to this point regarding his credentials. So I can't imagine anything would happen now. Okay. So I don't know what you think about this, Jay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say because we're not there. We don't know what's going on. I mean, I, I would say that a discussion between the two points to a good start. And that's all that we can really talk about at this point is what – we don't know what was said. What I gathered from the discussion was they talked about their differences and they were fine. I am not sure if that would lead to something different. There have been people that have had their credentials pulled, but for not the reasons that you guys have been told in terms of certain people who have beef with players, there were other things going on that were far more egregious than any sort of overtly criticizing things that were said about players. Hmm. I'm not going to be messy. and I'm not going to say names. That's not my business or anything like that. But there has to be a little bit more about that. And I think that if they were able to sit there and have a discussion, and they were able to have a talk that was brokered through the team. That wasn't brokered through Kinlaw's people or, and, and Grant. That was brokered through the team. So that's a good start. Where this goes, I don't know. But I would say that part of the terms of this is, hey, hash out your differences really quickly on the phone. But Grant, don't go talking to Kinlaw in the locker room. Don't go asking this player for something as well, too. So I think there is some sort of mutual understanding in terms of, hey, you guys are good. We're fine. You've apologized on both ends, I believe. I mean, that's what I gathered from what I heard about the discussion. But don't now you don't get certain access to that player. And I think that is probably the best thing possible at this point, just in terms of let's not start the fire, anything like that. That's it. Absolutely. Not lying. JC, All thank facts. you. All facts. All facts. That, <laughs> thank that you. San you said I was the best drip in the jacket, game. That San Francisco Giants jacket at yeah, the Rockies not, hey, game. I'm hard. like, man, I'm like, what you, this oh my hard. goodness, man. Oh my goodness. Too hard. <laughs> Too hard. <laughs> yeah, that, that shit went hard. Um, All right. We'll, wingspan. Yeah, we'll wrap up. <laughs> yeah, someone's talking about your wingspan. Someone said you're 7'2". Uh. How tall are you? Can you, you confirm yeah. that I'm seven two? We met. We met in LA for the NFC title game. Can you, can you <laughs> confirm that I'm seven two? Steph? Jason, Jay, I I am I'm like five feet. Okay, uh-huh. so everyone is like seven feet to me. You know. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, hey, I'm not that tall, guys. Relax. It's okay, man. Like like put it like this. I'm 6'5", and Javon Kinlaw is taller than me. Um, So that should go to talk about, like, whatever it is you think that would happen in any sort of squabble, snowfall, right? They're squabbling, right? Like, yeah, teach a man how to squabble. Uh, But, yeah, nobody wants problems with Javon Kinlaw in that way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And he, he took to Instagram uh, earlier today, not too long ago. He said, stand firm for what you believe. 
don't let no one play with your top. That's fine. And you know what? Again, a little bit more to the point that you were talking about with fans and such. And Javon Kinlaw was placed in a bad spot to begin with because he is here to replace someone that was near and dear to the 49ers fan base. Now, it may not look like this in terms of one for one. Yeah, that's fine, Ben. I appreciate you, bro. But but one to one, it looks like to a lot of 49ers fans, Buckner was traded for you. Now, you have to come in and be DeForest Buckner off the bat. And we know Javon Kinlaw is not getting injured on purpose. We know that, okay? That's not something that he's doing on purpose. And he's working his ass off to get back. You know, you never talk crazy about anybody that's trying to work their ass off to get back. So a lot of people taking shots at D Ford about, man, you robbed the team. Man, you did this. You think that that man doesn't want to be on the field? You think that that man doesn't want to be playing the game that he wants to play? Stop saying stuff like that. And, yeah, at a certain point, that's why I'm not going to tell that man how to feel. That's what yesterday's interaction with Grant kind of told me more than anything. That felt pent up. That felt very yeah. pent up. And it didn't just mean it was coming from Grant alone. Exactly. That is something that he had been feeling and wants to show more than anything that he is – Working towards the to, to living up to that draft capital, which by the way, he didn't draft himself there. That's not his problem. Again, but it's a holding discussion for another day. But what I gathered from what I saw from that video was a guy who had heard everything, pent up. Debo heard everything. That's why he showed up to training camp and wanted to show everybody. I'm I'm tired of you calling me a extension of the running game. I am gonna be the best that I can be. These guys hear all of it. Some guys take it. And they use it, and they don't lash out. But I'm not going to tell that man how to act based on what he's been seeing. So for fans, it's always the guy that has a problem walking up a flight of stairs that tells professional athletes what they should be doing. Don't be huffing and puffing up five stairs and tell somebody, yo, you need to play better. You need to do this. You need to do that. Worry about yourself. And sometimes there's things that are out of these athletes' control in terms of what they want to do and how they want to perform. That's the last thing I'll say. And again, the one, th- the other thing that I walked away from, aside from that that was pent up, the dehumanizing part. There are people under those helmets. There are people in that uniform. You cannot talk crazy like that and then expect that person. Some people can block it out. God bless them. Some people can't, and some people don't want to. And I think that comparing certain players, Fred Warner would have never done something like that. Cool. That's fine. Fred's different. That's But that speaks to Fred. That speaks to Fred. But you have to be able to understand these are still human beings. He talked about his family. He talked about his stop playing with my name. Narratives are born from internet whispering. I heard that Jimmy Ward for a long time was a bust. Look how quickly that fan base turns when you do things. So there is a school of thought. Hey, Javon, don't listen to any of that. Go on the field, all that goes away. For sure, that's there. But I'm not here to tell that man how he should feel about any sort of criticism. And a lot of that felt pent up. So last thing I'll say about it. Absolutely. Amen. And at the end of the day, I think we all just want Ken Law to – you know, channel all that frustration and, and all of this into take it know, out on offensive linemen on, on the field. Yeah. Which I, I think he will. And I'm, I'm rooting for him. Um, you know, this is just a, a blip in the off season radar that, you know, we'll forget about at the end of the day. <laughs> Let's all Steph, be honest. <laughs> Steph, can we talk about, can we talk about this team? Just yes. real quick. Just real quick. Can we just I'm talk so... about this team? <laughs> This so franchise. glad, so glad you said that. It's what we're here for. So let's talk about OTAs, man. Damn. Um, well, well, real quick before we do that, I just want to talk about. I just want to talk about something yeah. else, right? Like we're podcasters, right? Yeah. We have to find a way to draw content, have people tune into our stuff. Mm-hmm. Steph, this team is a nonstop news cycle. For one reason really? or the other, 
And I am tired of people. Oh, my God. You're a clickbaiter. Your team is clickbait. Your franchise, whether it's your front office, whether it's your general manager liking a tweet after a bad loss in Tennessee, whether it is this situation going on, every single week, we don't have to create the content. You know why? Exactly. The content creates itself. When you are a 49er podcaster or anybody that covers this team, I am tired of people talking about clickbait. Your team is clickbait. And one last thing that I'm going to say that's going to make people really mad. You laugh at other franchises. Oh, what a circus. Oh, look (laughs) at them. That's you. That's your franchise. Your franchise is the circus. Your franchise is the circus too. You talk crazy about the Dallas Cowboys can't, you know, the Dallas Cowboys are a freak show. Jacksonville Jaguars are it. Show me the difference. Spot the difference. Especially when we're talking about what we're talking. We just spent 30 minutes talking about an interaction that happened on YouTube. 30 minutes. Yep. <laughs> Your team is clickbait. Just accept it. And stop yelling at other teams and saying, ha ha, look at that joke of a franchise. Do you know who laughs? At the 49ers, everyone else, because Jimmy Garoppolo's still on his team. There's still whispers about Jimmy Garoppolo starting, all of that crap, even though we know better. Come on. Start to start to look at it through a different lens. Your team is clickbait. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. I think I'm going to have to make that that close-up of you to the camera a meme or some, a meme? some yeah, sort. As usual. Jesus, man. <laughs> it's fine. In fact, maybe some one of the people watching can – create that and it'll be ready by the time we're done no no man don't listen to her no, no man, man no no, no man. man but, let's but anyway OTAs. Go ahead, look, let's get into otas uh ota started on monday the 23rd and like i mentioned tuesday's session was open to the media a few players didn't participate which is okay it's voluntary all right but well you know I'm gonna just give myself a little shameless plug, okay? Because I did Fire. write, I did write this for 49ers Gold Mine, you know, tracking who isn't participating and why. So let's look at some of these. Jimmy Garoppolo, pff, we know why he's not participating. Uh, not Kyle, Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, Shanahan gave some updates. Uh, you know, still hoping to trade him. He also said it wasn't a guarantee, which was interesting, but. I still think that is the overall plan for Jimmy Garoppolo. Moving on. Debo Samuel, we expected this, okay? He is uh, still in negotiations for a new contract. So I am totally okay with Debo not being part of OTAs. And to be fair, if he had the contract, he probably wouldn't be there either. That's true. I mean, uh, we about to see all the names that are on this list. There's so many names. I mean, OTAs for veterans is like kind of pointless. It's just like more of a formality than anything. Um, Kyle Shanahan did say that he expects Debo Samuel to return for mandatory minicamp, though, which actually surprises me because I, I thought Debo would wait until the very last second yeah. or until he had his contract to show up to any off season shit. And so to me, that that's kind of a, a, a good step in the right direction, I would say. And, and Kyle Shanahan did say, um, you know, he reiterated, he still feels like he did during the draft when, or the, after the draft, he said, he said he felt stronger that, that he feels they can work it out still. And so I feel really good about that situation. Jay, did it bother you at all that Debo was not at OTAs? Not at all. I mean, look, As I hate to bring this up because it's something that really bothered me. Like Tariq Cohen was working his way back from an injury, trying to get himself yeah. in shape. And he popped his Achilles. This is the reason you don't show up without a deal. Because yeah. these sort of things can happen out of nowhere. I do not blame Debo Samuel. And I was not looking for him to be there. And this doesn't tell me anything more than the prediction that I already had that they will find a way to get it done. And again, I reiterate, if Debo Samuel even had his deal, I doubt he's there there at this point anyway. So just to put that out there. Yep. I agree. Shouldn't bother anyone else either. He's he's taking care of himself. He's training. 
He's staying in shape. That's all we can ask for. And we'll just wait for that new contract. Um, George Kittle and Charlie Warner, both tight ends, they are dealing with a lower half issue apparently. So, again, because OTAs is not a big deal, Shanahan said they're not even going to risk it. They'll be held out until training camp maybe. So uh, that's that on them. Kyle Juszczyk, he – should be back. I mean, he only missed Tuesday. So oh, no. Kyle Juszczyk's not there. That's it. He's not playing this year. Like, everybody freak out. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, really, though. I mean, I don't know. It's not a big deal. Uh, the reason why I wanted to put this together is because everyone has a this different a reason thing. for not yes. going to OTAs, right? Like, context sometimes it's injury. Though. Yeah. Um, Alex Mack, we know the context here. We've all been waiting for his decision. Kyle Shanahan's update if you can call it that. He said, I've got a pretty good idea of what he's doing, and I'm sure you guys do too. Jay, do you have any idea what that might mean? Because I'm like, hmm, I I have no idea. I don't know. Like, what do you think? I mean, if you ask the media, I'm pretty sure that they would say that they don't think he's coming back. I mean, it's May 25th at this point. And, you know, and and, and again, I uh, I had a take on this a few days ago that I have to, like, reverse course on. Because at first I said... Well, dude, if they're waiting for you, this is kind of bad to leave them twisting in the wind. But I kind of underestimated this front office and this franchise and Kyle and them to not have backup plans and not know. But if you if he said the media and you kind of know, then I don't think he's coming back, is my opinion. And when he said he's in another country right now. Now, yes, there is a school of thought that says. Alex Mack can just pull up for training camp. He knows the scheme. He's good. He's ready to go. Go. Okay, cool. But when Kyle said that, Kyle had a little spiciness in his tone that Mm -hmm. was felt, I felt like right before the Rams game, the regular season finale. I know what we're doing at quarterback. I just don't want to tell you. And that's what I kind of got from that. It was draw your own conclusion, but I think you know. And I would suspect that he's not coming back unless, I'd love to be wrong on this one. I would, and he just got married. So remember, honeymoon. He's in another country right now. He's loving his life, and he's not an old married guy. An old married guy might be on the on the fence, like I can't stay here with this woman. She's killing me. But in the <laughs> beginning, that honeymoon phase is the best, and he might just want to stay home with his wife. Go for it, man. Like I'm with you, Alex. Go for it. All right. Yeah, go back and forth on this one because I'm like, okay, there's no way he hasn't made a decision yet. Like, there's no way, right? Like, and also I'm like, okay, we haven't heard anything yet. So the deeper or the closer that we get to actual football, that must mean he might just be coming back, right? But the fact that Shanahan or John Lynch haven't said anything, I think says a lot because – if he was coming back, you would just say that. Like, <laughs> you know. Um, I hate JC. He already he already made the meme. I hate him. <laughs> why okay, why are you to... all like this? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to find Keep that going. on Twitter. Keep... Yeah. I Oh my god. Okay, yes. I'm gonna have to find that. But um yeah, no. we... <laughs> Keep <going. laughs> we can going. Um Mike McGlinchey, I mean, we know he's still rehabbing, but he Shanahan provided updates. He's ahead of schedule, should be ready by training camp. This is very encouraging news on Mike McGlinchey. Um, we were all worried, torn quad. Oh, my God, he'll never be the same. Well, we don't know if he'll ever be the same, honestly, but the fact that he will even be ready by training camp is amazing, and we'll get to see what he looks like then. Uh, yeah, Trent, come and, uh, on, man. The, real quick, we know Trent's coming back. Real yeah. quick, I just wanted to interject real quick. So, with with Mike, um, we spoke to the doc from ninety five seven the game, and he talked about that all of the things that he's clearing puts him on track for a training camp. And that was about two weeks ago that we had him on the show. Mm-hmm. He just said, yes. he just said, expect a bit of a drop off, not in the pass blocking, in the run blocking. And he said that he wouldn't expect Mike McGlinchey to be at a hundred percent until the next year, and that would depend on whether he's a 49er next year. So take that for what it is. Yeah, very important year coming for uh, Mike McGlinchey. He's on his uh, fifth year with the team. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. 
but yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on McGlinchey. Trent, we're not worried about in the least bit. I mean, he is he'll be back for mandatory mini camp, but that's what we expect. Brunskill dealing with some knee tendonitis, but he's expected back by training camp. Bosa, if it's not broke, don't fix it. He's training with his brother. They are like freaks of nature. We're just gonna let them continue to do what they do. No issues there. D Ford. Latest reports on D Ford have the 49ers releasing him, most likely happening after June 1st. We are approaching that date, so it's only a matter of time. There's no point for D Ford to, you know, be at any OTAs. All right. Kinlaw, he is ahead of schedule with his knee surgery. Uh, we got that update from Shanahan as well. And, you know, it seems like Kinlaw you know, is, is doing well coming back from his surgeries and his injuries. So hopefully, you know, he just needs to put it on the field and show that he could do it. Right. So, but I'm excited about that. He's expected back for training camp. Kalia Davis, he might, I mean, this one we all expected as well, right? He tore his ACL back in 2021. Uh, I think it was like the fall of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Um, And Mm -hmm. John Lynch has said he wasn't sure if he would be, ready even for the start of the regular season. So expect him to land on uh, the pup list or the NFI list um, and probably just redshirt uh, his rookie year. Jason Verrett, I mean, he is back, but he is still rehabbing, uh, coming back from his ACL tear. But, you know, the good news is, you know, they think he can be ready around training camp. They're pulling for, for that to be possible. And... Yeah, I'm very excited to see Jason Verrett. I don't know about you. Oh yeah, yes, I, I, uh, you, I absolutely am, and here's why: if Jason Verrett is anywhere near where he was in 2020, you're talking about kicking in the cornerback one from this team into the slot, and you have depth now to a point that this Shanahan Lynch regime has never had, and that just means. And that just means that Jason Verrett is a signing that is the lowest of risks, zero against the cap, even if he plays on the year. That was part of the deal, like that was working. And the highest of rewards, if he can be anything close to what he was in 2020, which was absolutely locked down. So, yes, I love it. And I, I am rooting for him. And I and I thought that I kind of felt like I was the only one who caught it. Kyle Shanahan said, we expect him for training camp, and he's ahead of schedule, but we're all pulling for him. That locker room that we talked about that is so much, so so close-knit, they care about Jason Verrett, and I think that that was something that I walked away with and I was yeah. impressed with. Oh, yeah. As soon as, like, the news of the signing came out, like, a bunch of players went to their social media to, you know, see how happy they were to have him back. So definitely says a lot about – you know, him and just also, you know, the team and how tight knit they are. Ambry Thomas, he was just sick. So he, he'll probably be back at OTAs once he's done or once he's feeling better. Fred Warner, um, you know, again, Fred Warner doesn't need to be at any OTAs. We are okay with that. But he was watching. So, you know, he's still involved. That's a good thing. Aziz Al Shair. He's undergone two surgeries. This was the first time we've heard about these surgeries, really. Um, but the good news is he's progressing well. He's expected back by training camp. Demetrius Flanagan fouls. Man, a lot of, lot of linebacker injuries, man. But at least, though, you know, Flanagan fouls is also expected back for training camp. So, I mean, nothing to worry about right now. You know, people rehabbing, still recovering from last season. So, I mean, again, we're not worried. Jeremiah Jamel, he's one of the undrafted free agents. Uh, Cam Inman uh, said he was not present. And that one's interesting to me. Again, like, oh, he's just an undrafted free agent. Why are we talking about him? But I don't know. That, I thought that was kind of notable because it's like, all right, you're an undrafted free agent. you got to fight for your, you know, value on this roster or even just a practice squad. And you're not at OTAs. Hopefully it was just that one day. I really don't know. We didn't get any updates on that. But anyway, um, because so many guys missed, though, it made for some pretty interesting, you know, lineups. All right. So one of the first things, uh, the offensive line, there's a lot of new faces. There's a lot of questions around the offensive line. We got a couple tweets here from David Lombardi. First string offensive line. 
at left tackle, Colton McKivitz, left guard, Aaron Banks, center, Jake Brendel, right guard, Jalen Moore, right tackle, Justin School. Does any, any of this surprise you, or is this pretty much like how you expected? Well, the Jalen Moore thing is a little bit because he had played both tackle positions, and I think that's kind of where he was slotted at a little bit. And I, I re- Justin School is kind of forgotten about. Remember, he yeah. played – in 2020, in that COVID barren game, and unfortunately, he was, you know, hung out to dry. Just, you know, again, the team was, like, barren with injuries at that point. But Justin School being there at right tackle, Colin McKibbis played left tackle in the winner-take-all game that the 49ers needed to have in Week 17. I think a lot of people forgot that. The Jake Brendel thing is not necessarily a surprise in terms of he was a center, but I think a lot of people forgot about him as well. The Aaron Banks thing is really, really good because that's his natural position. But the Jalen Moore thing is the one that sticks out to me a little bit more. The thing is, is that Jalen Moore, as you see on this screen, actually moved from right guard to right tackle. And we all know this team loves their flexibility. Burford can move from tackle to guard. Brunskill can play center, guard, tackle, whatever it is. And he moves around. So positionless football is something that this 49ers team on both sides of the ball, they run with. So it was really more just the Jalen Moore thing, I think, that had me a little bit like, oh, man, uh, that is something that they're trying to figure out. Now, if Jalen Moore, while Daniel Brunskill is dealing with his tendonitis, can show something at right guard, then we've got a pretty interesting camp battle on our hands. Think about this. Jalen Moore is somebody they invested draft picks into. Daniel Brunskill is somebody they found as an undrafted free agent. If you were asking me right now, I'm going to put my money on Brunskill. Because he's been there, they've continued mm-hmm. to use him. But I think that if Jalen Moore shows a little bit more, I think that becomes an interesting dynamic and might become a camp battle that we didn't see coming. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of moving pieces on this offensive line during this off season, uh, these offseason workouts because, again, there's a lot to figure out here. So, you know, this lineup is not final, right? They're going to test some things out. They're going to see who works best with who and whatnot. And after all, it's just a second day of OTAs that, you know, we were mentioning here. So a lot could change, but definitely an interesting, you know, first look at the offensive line. Now, uh, Brandon Ayuk, Juwan Jennings, they were the top uh, pass catchers. I also heard Malik Turner, you know, his name a few times. He got a little bit of run. He was one of the Malik Turner agent. had the big play the of the day from yes. Big Daddy Sudfeld. Stop <laughs> talking crazy about Sudfeld. <laughs> oh, man. Um, training camp hero of 2021, right? <laughs> Sudfeld. Um, wake up, honey. New Sudfeld dart. <laughs> Uh, but the top corners were Charvarius Ward, Emmanuel Mosley. Interesting enough, Dark Darquez Denard was at nickel. Um, I thought that was interesting because yeah. I, I, f- I would have put some other guys ahead of him. But at the same time, the 49ers like to have their rookies or their younger players really earn their spots. So when you see some of this like early on, Darquez Denard at nickel with the like, – First string nickel, I guess. You know, don't be too alarmed. You know, it, it's just the process that the 49ers like their rookies to go through. You got to earn your spot. Right. And it, there's, there's a certain amount of bodies and things like that. And it, uh, again, yeah. this isn't everything, but it is a, a nice little insight because we saw Talano Hufanga actually take the the uh, snaps across from Jimmy Ward. Now, that actually makes sense when you think yes. about it. The guy has been on the right That's something we know for a fact. They really like him. And Tarverius Moore is working his way back. George Odom, we don't know necessarily. I have Odom winning that job because of his experience, and I think that he can mm-hmm. offer a little bit more at this point. But that makes sense. And again, right now, it's the first day of media availability, the second day of OTAs. That doesn't necessarily mean that that is the pecking order. I was at the exactly. first day of training camp. And Dante Johnson was the corner across from Jason Verrett. We all know that that's not what happened. There's a certain amount of bodies that are going to go around. So it's interesting to talk about. And it is interesting to think about their thought process right now. But it doesn't necessarily predict anything going forward. It's a nice little indicator. Yes, absolutely. Um, And, yeah, you mentioned it. Tarverius Moore, dude, 
Okay, I just got to say this really quick. Charvarius Ford and Tarvarius Moore, I get their name. Like, I know they're different players, but their names are so similar that, like, you have to I keep them just for names. One person's name and say the next. Like, oh man, that, that one's forget uh... the Forget the scheme, forget the fit. Name basis, you have to do it just based on that Charvarius and Tarvarius. It just it makes sense. Just do it. <laughs> so, Tarvarius Moore, he is. He was doing second team uh, safety and then George Odom as well. Um, so, yeah, I, but I'm with you on George Odom. I think he's going to get an opportunity for sure. Um, who do you think benefits the most from getting these extra reps while, you know, some of the veterans are not present? Hufang. Um, yeah. Hufang is a guy that needs to play with more instinct than physicality. And what I mean by that is he doesn't have the athletic ability to – make up steps if he makes a wrong step. And, and that is something that, yes, there is development when it comes to this. And this is not me, you know, whatever, hating on Hufanga, shitting on him, whatever it is that you want to call it, mm -hmm. is if you're going to play with instinct, then you have to know exactly what's coming and you can't be beat on double moves. You have to know exactly, like, this is the way that you have to play. You have less room for error than a guy like Tarverius Moore, who maybe makes misses a step but has the closing speed to get back and make a play Hufanga is not one of those guys but it's good for him and I think that yeah. the more he understands one what he's seeing in terms of route concepts what what other teams want to do and two how they're going to attack him because you're not going to go at Ward Mosley or Verrett like let's say he's there or the other Ward you're going to attack the the person that you're not sure about so Hufanga really needs these reps because it's yeah. going to be impactful for him to play with more instinct and play without thinking. And he has to learn the learn to diagnose, learn what people are trying to do, and then from there, just play the way that he can with instinct, which is like a guy with his hair on fire and is fast and he's not thinking and he's playing that way. So Hufanga really needs these reps if he's going to be the guy because he can't afford to lose steps he has a smaller margin for error when it comes to diagnosing certain routes yeah i like the answer that's a good one um let's talk about the quarterback position all right um really quickly this this tweet from david lombardi i liked it just because you know he talked a little about trey lance well george kittle actually made this point i'll read the tweet George Kittle made an interesting point today. He said these OTAs, since they have so much seven on seven, it can really help immerse Trey Lance in the timing of Kyle Shanahan's pass offense because without a pass rush, the scrambling component just isn't there. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, let's talk about the fact that these snaps are really helping Trey Lance as well. And I will say, I think we all saw it, that in his presser yesterday with the media – he sounded like confident. He sounded loose. And we didn't get a lot of we, we didn't hear much of Trey Lance last season, right? Um, he wasn't the starter and all that. It was almost like he was shielded away from us. But based on what other members of the media have said, they can tell the difference between last year and now and how Trey Lance is carrying himself. So that, I think that's really exciting. Um, and he actually had a great answer to a question that, ironically, Grant asked. <laughs> to, to Funny how that him. works, huh? <laughs> I'm going to play it really quick because I really liked his answer. Good or not, you're going to be when you are done. I was just talking to Peter about this, actually. Um, in the most respectful way possible, like, I really – it doesn't change – how I feel about you guys as people, but I, I really don't like necessarily, it's not my job to care what you guys say or anyone else on social media. I mean, for me, it's, I care about what the guys in the locker room think and what my coaching staff thinks. Um, and at the end of that, that's my job. Um, you guys, unfortunately, aren't the ones that are making decisions for me um, or really have any effect on me in the most, again, respectful way possible. But uh, uh, I know everyone's got you know strong opinions one way or the other. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna go out and, and try to Prove people wrong, prove myself right. Uh, but I'm doing it for the guys in the locker room. What did you think about his answer and just like 
the poise that you could just see the leadership that we saw just off of this one interview. We all know there's a little bit more to playing quarterback. We all know that there's a little bit more to playing quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. What happens on the field is one thing. How you dictate what happens off the field is another thing. That wasn't a scripted answer. That wasn't a cliche mm -hmm. answer. That wasn't something that a PR team wrote. That was an example of a 22-year-old young man being poised well past his age. That was the thing we should be talking about today. That's what we should have been opening the show with. What every, everybody wants to know is, and everybody heaps praise on the guy that was here before him, leadership. Look in his eyes. How does he feel? That sounded like a guy who knows, one, it's his job. Sorry, guys. And for anybody who was actually, you know, worried about that, it's done. We're moving on. And two, sounds like a guy who was very sure of himself. I love it. Yes. It was respectful, but it was emphatic, if that makes sense. It was the most respectful way that anybody has ever told his detractors to kiss his ass, I think, in the history of football <laughs> quotes. I love it. It's great. That was really what got me hyped because he's another guy. These are all young men. And this is what you need to remember about young men, especially in the 20s. They're raised on social media. Mm -hmm. Now that they're famous, you're not going to tell them to get off of it. No. You want to check now more. I'm famous now. I want to check. I see it all. Trey's not out here responding to everybody, but Trey's noting it all. And that's what I liked about it. And when he said was so impactful with those respectful words. That was the kindest way I've ever heard anybody tell anybody. I don't care what you think. And I believed him. That's what I think yeah. is the best part about it. I believed him. That wasn't made up. Sometimes guys give you false bravado. Nothing about what that quote said was false, made up, written, prefabricated. That was a man who knew exactly what he wanted to say and knows exactly where he is on his team, and how he is about himself. Bravo, Trey Lance. That's what we should have opened the show with and been talking about. Sorry, Jason. Jeez. <laughs> hey. It's not that, <laughs> man. It's not. I'm, it's Javon, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But, but yeah, like, he seemed more confident. And also, like, based on him, he did talk a little bit about his first year in the league, right? And... I almost got the sense based on what he said about it that, you know, he was maybe a little overwhelmed by all the different changes and all the things that he had to go through in his first year. And that's such a, like, that's not discussed enough. The fact that it's such a big change for some of these players, you get drafted, which is already, that's like a life changing moment. That's a lot to take in. Ten days later, you're at rookie mini camp. You don't really get even a chance to to take it all in, and it moves very, very quickly, right? So, um, I do, in hindsight, like I I appreciate the fact that he was able to soak it all in in his first year, and now I think we're seeing the results of that. Him being, you know, more confident in himself and his abilities. And now it's just about playing football. You know what I mean? So I appreciate that. And then also he he talked a little bit about his finger and how much that affected him uh, last season. I I think it, it it sounded like it was more serious than we even imagined. Like sure. he, he mentioned the fact that he couldn't even straighten his finger. And when it, and that's in your throwing hand, you can imagine how difficult that may be, not being able to straighten your finger when you're trying to get that uh, torque in, on the football, right, when you're trying to throw it. So he even said, like, that changed a little bit of his mechanics a little bit, um, just trying to get the ball off. Um, but the good news is 100% healed now. It's straight now. And he worked with a throwing coach this offseason to get all those uh, kinks figured out. And, I mean – Again, it just I, I'm very excited about him. One question I have for you, Jay. Do you think the 49ers are ready to market Trey Lance? And this was an interesting discussion that actually Grant brought up, right? He he brought up the fact that the 49ers 
you know, didn't really put his face on anything. And well, why wouldn't they? Because they would get so much money just off, off of having his face there because the fans love him. They eat that shit up. Like they mm-hmm. want more Trey Lance. Um, but they're very purposeful, very careful about which players they market. One thing that was interesting after the, the first day of OTAs, they posted a video um, about OTAs and Trey Lance was in it quite a bit, which was exciting because this was our first time really seeing the 49ers like post a lot about them at, at least like this season, right? Or this off season. So again, like, do you think that they're ready to finally market him? I think at that point, that's when they officially like hand him the keys. Like, okay, you good. Yeah. Um, I think that there's, Two things. Yes, this is officially his thing. And especially when you hear Kyle Shanahan speak about, yeah, we're still trading Jimmy and, and, you know, and, and I think that anybody who listens to the Haberman Middlecoff podcast, they were actually at OTAs that day too as well. One of the things that I took away was, is that everything on the offense felt very much geared towards him. Like there's not going to be any sort of pump faking in terms of OTAs. And then you're just going to change everything. No, the shift is happening. And another thing is, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch and these guys, they don't give a shit about dispelling narratives. And if they did care about it, they would have come out very early last year in the draft process and said, Mac Jones is not a part of the discussion in three. And But they don't. You know why? Kyle likes it, that you don't know what's going on. They like it, that there is all this discussion in the air. They yeah. know exactly what they're doing to the chest, and they laugh yeah. at the outside discussion. So for me, it was a little bit about – they don't care about dispelling that narrative. And two, maybe they're there trying to keep feelings good with Jimmy Garoppolo so they don't just, you know, maybe twist the knife a little bit more now that they know that it's a little bit gone, right? Like you're already, you know, moving on from him and things like that. Now it's OTAs. Cat's out the bat. Nothing you can do at this point. The guy's not going to be there because he's injured. The guy's not going to be here because it's not his team anymore. And this is Trey Lance's team. So I think both of those things are true. They're not interested in dispelling any narratives. And two, when else were you going to unveil this until OTA started and you got to see Trey Lance in action? So I think that they played this perfectly at this point because it's May. The, and they don't need to put the stuff around the stadium at this point. No one's in the stadium. So I think they did it the way that they wanted to do it, and they do things the way that they always want to do things, and they don't really give a damn what people are saying about it outside. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, they're very purposeful, and so to see this was – a great sign. Uh, Jay, thank you so much for coming on the channel today. Always a pleasure. And guys, subscribe to the channel. Like this video, okay? Um, I'm actually going to be out of town for like the next week. So hopefully nothing crazy happens on... Doubt it. You know, for now. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's why I wanted to get this episode out of the way. And then, you know, I'll be back next week a week from now and i'll have a another video around that time as well so thank you guys for watching and tuning in appreciate you guys have a good weekend have a good memorial day weekend peace